Hey folks, Roland Martin here and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about better shiner fishing. I'm talking about catching great big bass in the 10 pound class like this one I just caught this last week. I've caught a lot of monster bass on shiners. In fact, in Florida, the two or three biggest strings of bass I've ever caught were out of Lake Okeechobee and out of Kissimmee and some of the other places that, you know, th you know, 40, 50 pounds of bass with just five bass. Okay, it's just it, it, immense fish. I'm talking about dozens and dozens of fish out of Lake Rodman Reservoir, up to 14 pounds that I've caught. And I've had two and three 10 pounders a day out of the Ocala Forest. I mean, th this is all shiner fishing that I've done years and years and years ago, and I'm, I'm kind of redoing it now. Because I was in the shiner business at Lake Okeechobee uh, 25, 30 years ago when it was in this heavenless heyday in the 80s. And I had a shiner operation. I had t I taught guys how to throw the cast net. I kept uh, 300 dozen uh, alive in, in my big tanks, and I still we still have them over there, but not not that I'm running it. But I did run that whole operation. We caught thousands of big bass. Okay, so I really know a little bit about shiner fishing, and I want to I want to show you a better way to shiner fish. Okay, I'm going to start off first with the tackle because it's so important to catch big, big quality giant 10 pound fish like that, you gotta have the right tackle. Now let's, let's take the wrong tackle. I think it's the wrong tackle. Here's just a big weedless hook like I'm using uh, sometimes. Okay, there's a couple problems with this hook. Number one, the wire is all coming loose on it. See that? The wire is kind of unwrapping on the thing. And so the other thing is that it's all, it's all the wiggles back and forth. Now I could fix that with super glue. Okay, I could. But right now it's wiggly around. Now the other problem with this weedless hook, and this is one that you'd buy, is that if the if you had the weedless hook hooked up like like this, and the fish hits it from the side, watch what happens. It pushes right down. He can't. It's not. It's not. It's not going to hook the hook. The, the fish. It, 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 it's bending over on the on the whole wire, and it's it's not. It can't possibly hook the fish. You can't. You can't hook the fish. Well, the one solution to that is to widen this up, is to take your weedless hook as you buy it and get it real wide. Now, when it comes over on the side, it kind of pushes out of the way better. So the wider, the better. Okay, but what I do is I make my own weedless hooks. And I'm gonna just show you how to do it. Okay, now I'm a saltwater fisherman, so I got all kind of saltwater leader material, okay? And, and the, the leader material comes in different sizes. And the number size that I like a lot is a number seven. A number seven wire. You can buy it at Bass Pro Shop. You can buy it at all the saltwater places. It's just a, it's a standard leader. Number seven stainless steel wire. Okay. I'm going to cut a piece off about six inches, uh, five inches long. Just cut a, cut a little piece. Okay. Now I'm going to take a hook. And I'm just going to take this gamma got to six aught. Uh, it's called the shiner hook. <laughs> it's actually a shiner hook. And it's, it's Gamagatsu makes it. I'm going to take this six aught hook, okay, like this. And I'm going to come through the eye of the hook. Let me put my glasses on. <laughs> I'll tell you when you get my age, you need glasses. I put my glasses on. Come through the eye of the, of the hook right here with, this, with, the, with the leader material. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to bend it up this way. Okay, now watch, watch it. One, I'm just going to keep winding it around. Okay, keep winding around that the wire. You know, wind around the shaft of the of the thing, and I can even take pliers and hold it even tighter. And now I'm going to take the pliers and put on there, and just kind of and just kind of go like this, and just kind of wrap it a little bit more. Okay. Now to cut that wire off, well, almost, almost, almost ready. Uh, this guy. I'm just about ready to cut it off. Okay. You wonder how you cut that wire? I'm going to just show you how you cut the wire. Now, this is an old old trick for saltwater fishing. The wire is on there. Okay. I'm going to take the wire and bend it down. Okay. Bend it straight down like this. Bend it down. And make a little crank. See how I'm making that little crank right here? Okay. When I make the little crank right here, that's a little crank. I, I now crank it. Watch this, I crank it. I'll go one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It came right off. Little crank came off. And look, there's zero 
there, there's zero things sticking out. There's zero, nothing sticking out. Okay, nothing sticking out. That little piece came off. Okay, now, okay. It's still maybe not solid enough. It might wiggle back and forth. So let me take some super glue. And I could take the big commercial kind of super glue like I get here that I do for my bowls. Or I can just take uh, crazy glue like, like you can buy at the hardware store. Take a little safe, uh, crazy glue. Put a dab on there, just a dab of glue right on there, a little teeny bit, it's a little bit too much. Now I got this activator, you can let it air dry, or you can take an activator like I got, that's a commercial activator, it just makes it set up real quick. Okay, now it's solid. That, that wire is solid to the hook, it's not gonna move back and forth in any fashion. Okay? Okay, now I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna make a bend with my pliers. Now this is kind of a single wire, it's a single wire. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to bend, bend it out this way, just a little bit, like this. Okay, then I come up here and bend it again about half a quarter of an inch away, bend it again all the way around. Okay, bend it around another way. Come around here to the other side and bend it again right there. Okay, now I've got a little triangle here, a little triangle. Okay, I'm going to come around here to, to that spot and I'm going to start twisting it around this wire. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's good. Now, remember how I, uh, I, I broke the other one off? I bent it down, made a crank, and cranked it. Wait a minute. The hook's getting there. And cranked it. Okay. It cranked right off. Okay, it's just, it's just there's nothing sticking out. There's, th that wire is just as cool as can be. Now let's straighten this whole thing out. Let's kind of straighten this whole thing out now. And now I have a little wide, it's kind of wide. So you notice how wide it is? Now here's the neat thing about this weedless hook. I can hit it from the side. Look, I can hit it from the side, it springs out of the way. Hit it from the other side. It springs out of the way. No matter how you do it, it no matter how the fish hits that weedless hook, it's going to have an exposed hook. It's not going to get caught up like the other one did, like the commercial one, because it folds over. Now, this one here is going to be a perfectly good weedless hook. Okay, we got a good hook now. Now, let's go. Let's go one step farther. With 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 shiner fishing, what's really really helped shiner fishing a whole lot in the last few years is braided line. I'll tell you why braided line's so good. Monofilament, which was the standard in shiner fishing for years, sinks. And, and fluorocarbon sinks even more. But, but monofilament sinks some. Braided line really doesn't sink. Ra braided line floats on top for the most part. And, and you can go one step farther. You can buy fly line dressing and I spray fly line dressing like I'm fly fishing. Well, I'm not fly fishing, I'm shiner fishing but it makes it float even more. You want this line to float because you don't want the line to go down into the weeds. As there's hydrilla in the water, there's pepper grass in the water, there's all kind of underwater stuff. You don't want the line to sink. You want, as you cast out there with your little floating wall, you want all that to float. Now it's not gonna get tangled up in anything. Okay, so now I'm, I, this is, happens to be 50 pound braid. Uh, sometimes I use 65 pound braid. Depends in open hydrilla and stuff like that. Okeechobee, I think 50 is fine. If there's a lot of logs and stumps, like in Rodman Reservoir and some of the bushy areas around boat docks and stuff, I might go to 65. Okay, okay, now, okay. Whenever you go to that heavier line, you got to go to a heavier hook. But this is a pretty heavy hook, and that's the 6 aught Gamagatsu, and that's, that'll handle a 65-pound line. Okay, before I do anything, let me tie, a, put a barber stop on my line. Now, the barber stop is a pretty cool deal. Barber stops help with uh, your float, because see, the float is an indicator of where the, where the shiner is, okay? Now I'm gonna just come along and I'm gonna put a barber stop on my line, okay, right there. The barber stop is on the line, and that's what it's for, a barber stop, for a barber. <clears throat> so I'm gonna let the line. Now if you're in real thick grass and hydrilla and stuff, you only want a two or so foot leader, okay? So I'm going, to, I'm going to leave that alone right now. I'm not going to put anything on that. And now I'm going to take my hook that I just made 
my good weedless hook that's all set up with super glue and a number seven wire and it's a 100% weedless. And I'm gonna now put a double my line and make a palomar knot. What I do, I come through, I come through uh, the eye with the double line. Okay, make a nice long overhand knot right here, overhand knot right here, and take that tag end, which is just a loop at this point, and take the whole hook and go through the tag end and loop. Okay, now pull it all tight. I start with the with the tag end first. I pull the tag end first. That's that, and then I pull the main line second. Okay, now. I'm going to cut it off. Okay. <clears throat> now, I have a properly tied hook with a top really good weed guard. Okay, that's a 50 pound braid that's going to float and really help. And I've noticed the bass really, you don't need leader. I mean, you think, well, bass are spooky and they're going to see that. Right? They might see it, but I'm telling you, they don't care about it because I'm, I've used so solid braid straight to my hook so often. Now the braid's available, it's a way superior system, way, way superior. Okay, let's talk about the float. The float is an indicator of where your shiner is. You don't have to even have a float. If, if you just wanted to kind of just drift behind the boat with just a free line, that's fine. That, that's one way to do it, but it's hard to figure out how deep you are. It's hard to figure out just all about that. So if it's a weedy lake and you want to kind of control your depth, you don't want the shiner to get too deep, say, in the weeds, I'd put a float. Okay, now there's two kinds of floats. Let me just show you the standard kind of float. The first kind of float is a, is a float like this. It's a, it's a regular a styrofoam float. I pull my little stops out and I can put the little float on the line just above the bobber stop, above the bobber stop. Now it keeps it from sliding down the line, okay? And I put the other little bobber stop on. Now. That is now a nice little setup. There it is, that's a perfect setup. A nice big seven or eight inch shiner, say the size of these pliers, that would be the perfect complement. And I hooked the, that's another whole lesson and I'll have to talk about it, how to, how to keep your bait and how to hook your bait and how to deal with your shiner. I don't have any shiners to show you so I can't do that right now. But I will have sub subsequent stuff on how to catch your shiners, how to keep your shiners alive, how to hook your shiners and everything about that. But right now, let's just say I got the right complement here. Now there's another way of rigging up a, a float. Let me just show you, this is my favorite. I'm gonna show you a favorite way right now. Take this float off. It's got a little slice in there, okay. And let's take a balloon. Now, balloons can be real big. Now that's way, way too big. Because, see, you don't want any resistance on that shiner. You want to have just as little as small amount of resistance. Remember, this is just an indicator of where your shiner is. It doesn't have any other function. So let's let some air out. 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 Let's get it down small. Okay, that's pretty small. Remember, look at the size of this float. See, there's not much difference about the same size. So now I take my line, make an overhand knot right here. Now there's not much air pressure in this balloon, so it's not gonna, it's not, it's gonna hold up pretty good. Okay, that's that, that's that. Now I got an overhand knot here. Okay, let's go to my line, my regular line. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is make another overhand knot with this balloon, the end of this balloon thing, over the line itself. Just kind of come like this. It's kind of a little difficult sometimes. Let's stretch that thing out a little bit. Make an overhand knot. It's not the easiest thing in the world sometimes. I should, I should have kind of made it longer on that end, but anyway, I got it right there. Okay? Now, I got the balloon on there. The balloon, I can slide up and down the line, and I can hold it in place better with the bobber stop. Now that's in, in the shallow, uh, weedy waters, like I'm gonna be fishing, I'm gonna probably only have it about, uh, what, two feet deep or so, two and a half feet deep, and slide the balloon down, okay. Now, here's the last part of this, this equation. The last part of the equation is having the right 
rod and reel setup. This is a big, kind of a flipping stick by favorite. Just a big, heavy duty, uh, big, sexy series, uh, seven and a half foot flipping stick. Heavy duty. Now, I like a flipping stick for two reasons. It's long, seven and a half foot makes you cast because you remember that thing's hanging down, and so you can't, you want to swing cast it. You don't want to be throwing a big overhand cast and let the shiner come crashing on the water to kill your shiner. You want to do a gentle little pitch. And the best way to do it is with a nice long rod like this. With a nice long rod, you can make a kind of low pitch, low to the water. And you don't want to throw it real far because you don't want to have that thing crashing down and, get in, and then it'll backlash and pull off the hook. So you want to be real careful in casting your shiner as gently as possible so it's lively as can be. Lively shiners catch fish. Dead shiners don't work. So you can't have a dead or injured shiner. You want to keep them really lively. Okay, so that's the first thing. I got a big long flipping stick. Second thing is, I know you see me use favorite reels and favorite reels are fine, but you can use favorite reels and I use favorite reels as well. But I also use reels with a clicker. This is a saltwater series ambassador, an old time thing. I don't get any kind of money from it, but I just, this is a standard kind of reel and it has a clicker on the side. Look, you take this clicker, listen. When the line goes out, listen what happens. Hear it? It clicks. Now, in the state of Florida and some other states, you can fish uh, two and three rods. So sometimes I'll have three people in the boat, or say the three of us in the boat, we each fish two rods. Say we got plenty of shiners. I might fish six rods. You can catch more fish fishing six rods than you can catch fishing three rods, or fishing two rods, or fishing one rod. The more rods, the better. The more bait, the better. So anyway, so I'm using clicker reels when I can, and I have to be real careful because over the years I've lost about a dozen rods and reels. I'll tell my clients, I'll tell my people, put the thing in free spool, and they'll forget, and it won't be in free spool, big old eight pound bass will jerk it right out of the boat. <laughs> so I've lost a few rods. So you always have to push the button, make sure it's on a click, and so now you can hear it go if you're busy doing other things but you can watch your rod as well. Anyway, that's kind of a primer for a better shiner fishing, having the right equipment and the right tackle. And in subsequent videos, I'm gonna take you out and I'm gonna show you a lot more about shiner fishing and we're gonna catch some big old fish in the process. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for subscribing, hit that like button. Talk to you soon.